Hallelujah. I, I invite all of us on board uh, for a few minutes. I want to speak to us something the Lord uh, put in my spirit today, and I felt uh, it is good that we share it out as a church of Jesus Christ. Uh, I thank God that he has kept us strong, and uh, we are very happy that the Lord has continued to be our God and, uh, you know, to, to watch over our lives and uh, to maintain us by his grace in the name of Jesus. Now, I welcome you. I welcome everybody on board. Let us... Uh, let us uh, uh, fellowship tonight and uh, enjoy the faithfulness of God in his presence in the name of Jesus. So invite somebody. I'm about to say something the Lord uh, has put in my spirit today. So let, just invite somebody, share the video, uh, share the word of God. Let us uh, team up together and hear what the Lord is saying to the church. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you in your presence because we are the carriers of your presence we are your sons Jehovah Redeemer we gather in your presence as your sons and my God we pray in the name of Jesus that you're going to minister to our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit thank you Father because every gift that you've given unto us my God is to build the body to edify the body until all come to that knowledge of our Savior in his mighty name and I pray this hour my God even as I may minister to the church, that your Holy Spirit is going to minister through me, so that the word that you deposited in my spirit is going to reach out to somebody's life, and they are going to be edified, even in these early times, in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Thank you. I'm seeing everybody. I'm seeing people come up. Just invite somebody. Let us hear what the Lord is saying tonight, in the name of Jesus. Now, today, as I, I tarried in the presence of the Lord, the Lord dropped a statement in my spirit. Actually, I wrote it on my, my small notebook. And the Lord said, I come and caution all of us, including myself, that we avoid defilement. Church, the Lord is asking us to avoid defilement. Now, many other times that, uh, you know, we, we just live, uh, some of us are coming from some families, we are coming from some tribes, and we really want to fit in. Now, the Lord is coming for a church that does not have wrinkles, does not have spots, a church that uh, whose garment of the wedding is spotless. Hallelujah. So the Lord is requesting the church, you know, uh, we know the season we are in. If you are walking right with God, we are in a season of the move of the Holy Spirit. And if you are walking right with God, we all know where we are. So we, we are in that season we are calling at times, and we are not just calling it. We are sharp and, or we, we are equipped, you know, like the sons of Isaac. We know where we are as the children of God. So, um, we are in that last lap, you know, after people have learned, you know, in a race, there is that particular last lap. So we are in that last lap. And in this last lap, the Lord is asking uh, each one of us to make sure that we attain that purity of uh, our, you know, that, that purity that is going to take us to our internal destiny. Hallelujah. And as I talk this, I'm talking to the church to let you know that our God is a holy God. Our God is a holy God. And without holiness, none of us will be able to see him. So the Lord is saying, let us avoid defilement. Yes, we are still here on earth. The Lord is saying, avoid defilement. Now, um, Hallelujah. Now, I want to, if you're, if you're listening to me, you know, I, I, because of the assignment the Lord has given me by his masses, uh, 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 I'm called to restore order in the church. I'm called to restore order with a lot of humility. Uh, with a lot of humility. I'm doing this with a lot of humility. And uh, I'm also called to prepare the church for the second coming. Apart from other things, uh, the Lord has given me about five assignments. So uh, I would want to major on one tonight. And this is to prepare us for this season and where we are headed to. So Number one, I want the church to know we are in that last lap. And this last lap, we are going to enjoy final sanctification. Final sanctification. Number two, we shall enjoy total purification. 
total purification. This is where if you have been struggling with anything that is not born of God in your life, himself by the power of, uh, of, uh, of his Holy Spirit, he's going to convince you. You know, you, you, you may not even be in a fellowship. You may not even be in a prayer meeting. Even in your own house, you know, the Spirit of God is going to convince you this is not of our kingdom. Hallelujah. Because we are in that particular moment of being totally uh, purified by the grace of God in Jesus. Number three, we are in that season of proper refinement. Proper refinement. The Bible says, you know, the Bible shows us for God to become pure God, it goes through the process of burning. Hallelujah. And it is refined. Hallelujah. When you get it in the shop, it is not like it, the way it was when it was under, under the soil. Hallelujah. It is refined. So the Lord is refining us so that we can be spotless because he's coming for that church that uh, he died for on the cross in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the other thing we are going to see or that we are going to enjoy is that in this particular moment that God is removing the confusion that has been there. There's, there has been a lot of confusion in the church and in, in this edit time we are going to enjoy a lot of alignment. When you have been sanctified, totally purified and properly refined then the Lord is aligning our lives. My God of all glory. Hallelujah. Depending on what God created you for, what he wired you for. You know, he's telling Jeremiah, I knew you even before you were conceived in your mother's womb and I had set you apart. I had already ordained you to be a prophet to nations. Hallelujah. So there has been a lot of confusion and some of us, because of our interactions here and there, some of us, we may have lost whatever God ordained for our lives. But this particular early times, we are going to enjoy early times alignment. Hallelujah. Oh my God of all grace. This is where you are going to see a lot of relocations, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of cutoffs, a lot of pruning. Hallelujah. Some people will even literally and physically be relocated from some countries where they took themselves uh, because the assignment of God may be in another place. Hallelujah. We are going to see such a, a, a wonderful alignment that is coming from the hands of the Lord. Amen. The other thing we are about to witness, and the number five, is that we are going to witness, uh, you know, the, 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 the finishing revival, the finishing revival, where everybody who is destined for heaven, they, even if they fell, God is going to quicken them by the power of his Holy Spirit. Because one time Jesus said, anybody whom you have given unto me, none of them will get lost, unless that son of perdition, hallelujah. So anybody who is destined for heaven, the Spirit of God is doing an operation, hallelujah. Even the bright and the lame, that's what the Bible says, hallelujah. God is going to gather, God is gathering his own from every corner in the name of Jesus Christ. So there is going to be such kind of quickening. And I've been talking to the church and telling the church, avoid the big brother syndrome. Hallelujah. When somebody has been reconciled, they are going to, to receive the pay they have agreed with God, you know. We remember that parable uh, of, uh, of, of somebody, uh, Jesus gave a parable of that person who had uh, he called people, you know, he, he, he had called people to labor in his vineyard. And the Bible says uh, some of them were called in the morning, others were engaged later in the day. And uh, they were all supposed to be paid whatever they agreed. It was just one particular pay. None of them was to be paid much or less. Hallelujah. So it does not matter the time. It does not matter what we have done. It does not matter nothing. What matters right now is that the grace of God God is reconciling the people who are destined for heaven in the name of Jesus. So the Lord is saying to the church, the, the lemma word for this night is that church avoid defilement, avoid defilement. Hallelujah. And because of this, the Lord uh, is already doing something. The Lord is already doing something and cautioning the church and the Lord is already um, releasing such kind of a grace for this hour so that even if, if, even if you knew something is not seen, you know, and in, according to the word of God, it is seen. The Spirit of God is going to quicken you. And I'm saying, even from your own bedroom, even from your own kitchen, the Spirit of God will tell you, no, he, in this kingdom we don't do one, two, three things. The Spirit of God will minister to our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. So the Lord is delivering the church from the rest of the flesh. 
These are the spirits of the early times. The Lord is delivering our lives from the rust of the flesh, the rust of the eye, and the pride of life. Hallelujah. Those are the spirits. God is delivering the church from more of those things in the name of Jesus. So I want to say some few things. I'm going to say five things that the church, please take a pen and a paper. Please invite somebody. Call somebody to come on board. Let us hear what the Lord is saying. Because uh, the Spirit of God, I've said the Spirit of God dropped me. I, I mean, dropped to me these things today. So you need, we need, uh, they have really, uh, they have really transformed me already. And I believe even as a minister to all of us, uh, the Spirit of God is also going to edify my spirit by his grace in the name of Jesus. So number one, the Lord is speaking to us. The Lord is speaking to us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord is speaking to us that uh, we eat, in, we, we get the, the, the balanced diet of his word. The, number one, the Lord is speaking to the church for you to avoid defilement. Make sure you have the enough diet, you know, the balanced diet of the word of God. Now, a time has come, and it is now, my brethren, that we are not just going to look for scriptures that favor us. We are going to take the rebukes. You know, the Bible says the scripture is written, every scripture is written, you know, by God. It's the breath of God. Hallelujah. For rebuke, for correction. Hallelujah. So we are not just to take a scripture that is saying we are going to be blessed. We shall also look for the scripture that it says when we don't live as by the prospects of God, what happens? Hallelujah. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, we see what God is saying to the children of Israel. So the Lord is saying, number one, church, number one, watch out. Number one, one watch out make sure in your diet as a child of god this is the, the lord is saying eat the word of god in totality let us eat the word of god in totality make sure you have enough diet of the word of god in your life as a child of god now one time in the book of uh, john chapter 15 and verse 3 jesus was speaking to the disciples and he told them you have already been sanctified you have already been cleaned by the word not words he said by the word that i have spoken to you the word that, not words if you look at the, the scripture, it's saying the word, the word that I have spoken to you has already made you clean. Hallelujah. So what is the word of God showing us? The word of God is able to remove what science cannot remove in your life. What the character that nobody, even if your mother beat you up, you know, even if somebody tried to caution you and give you instruction, whatever those, all those things cannot do all together. If you eat the word of God in totality, the word of the Bible says that God is spirit. Now, the Spirit of God in, in the world, because it's the breath of God, it is able to, He's able to minister to your, to your inner being and caution you on what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. So for us to avoid defilement, number one, the Lord is saying, let us have enough diet of the word of God in, in all the components, hallelujah, in rebuking, in instruction, in all of them in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. God bless you. Invite everybody, for it bears his that to Amos, invite everybody, let us hear what the Lord is saying tonight by the grace of God in Jesus' name. So the Lord is speaking to us and telling us, let us eat the word. Let us eat the word. Hallelujah. The disciples had the word. Now, Jesus was there with them physically. He is in us now the hope of glory. So let us activate that. That's what I, I always say in the book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 20. You know, the power that is able to do exceedingly abundantly is already in us. We are not calling for the power. That power is already in us in the name of Jesus. So the Lord is saying for you to avoid defilement in this editor in this last lap for the children of God, whatever we are calling the edit times, because actually we are not even calling edit times, it is edit times, hallelujah. So it, for us to be able even to walk by faith, you know, we always say, you know, and it is written in the word of God that the just shall live by faith, hallelujah. For you to be able not to panic when everybody is panicking, when everybody does not know what to do in these edit times, when everybody is fearing, hallelujah, then you must have enough diet, hallelujah, oh, of the word of God. And I'm, I'm, I'm requesting everybody who is going to watch this and everybody who is watching me tonight, the Lord is saying, avoid hearing voices, avoid words. You know, Jesus is not talking about the words I have spoken to. He's talking about the word. Hallelujah. The word, because he is the word. Hallelujah. Now, listen to this. 
unless you have the word of God, unless in your store, I love what the Jeremiah says, that the new covenant, and that's what even the Hebrew is talking to us, that the new covenant we have entered into, the law of God is going to be written in us. Hallelujah. It will be inside us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not a near religion like the children of Israel used to do. It is not a near religion. It is not a, a scenario where we are waiting for somebody to go to the Holy of Holies and do an operation for us. Now, Jesus is in you. If you are a believer, Jesus is in you. So what is the Lord saying? For you to be able now to fit in in the kingdom of God and to qualify, have the word of God in your everything, in your whole system. Hallelujah. My God of all grace, in your whole system. Hallelujah. And that's why I'm requesting the church, let us not concentrate on the things that are being said. There's so many voices. If you concentrate on the so many voices, you are going to be defiled. And the Lord is speaking to the church avoid defilement have the word of God at your fingertips if you don't have the word of God in these early times when they say it is this you're going to buy it when you say it is that to it you're going to do it now I want to caution everybody who is going to watch this the Lord has been speaking to my spirit today that uh, you know we, when we appear before God when we appear before God none of us will have any reason whatsoever you know to justify themselves that I did this because prophet Regina told me to do this you know the spirit of God would even stop you and ask you did you have the conviction of me in you as a son of God hallelujah so let us not let, let us let us not fall voices even if it is for who even if it is for us hallelujah follow the voice of God that does not mean mean that you don't believe in the servants of God but I'm requesting the church let us learn how to test the spirits because we are in any times hallelujah don't despise anybody but test every spirit no I've always told people if a prophet comes to prophesy to your life or speak it to your life many times if you are you are in tune with God you should have that conviction in your spirit that this is my word hallelujah and many times a prophet coming to your life they should speak what your father because you have been in tune with your father what your father has already told you amen you just needed that confirmation from the voice of god amen hallelujah so we need our kingdom guidance we need our kingdom guidance we are sojourning here we are ambassadors of christ here so we need our 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 kingdom guidance because we are ambassadors here you cannot know how to behave where in that marriage in that company unless you have the word of god in you hallelujah one time david is making a prayer and he's saying he's telling god to make to enable him to hide the word of god in his heart so that he may not sin against him hallelujah because the minute you as a child of God, as a son of God, you do things that are contrary to the word of God. That is sin. Hallelujah. And David is making a prayer for himself in the name of Jesus. So number two, number two, the other thing that we are supposed to do is check on what comes out of your mouth. What come, comes out of you. That is number two. Check, avoid, I'm talking about avoid defilement. So check on what comes out of you. I love what the Bible says in Matthew 15 verse 10 to 11. Jesus is speaking again and he's saying, what enters in you does not defile you but what comes out defiles a man hallelujah oh my god of all grace hallelujah and did you know by your words you shall be acquainted even in heaven hallelujah so be careful uh, you know jesus is gratifying i'm just going to quote one scripture one scripture on what god has put in my spirit so the bible is saying what enters in a man what goes inside you does not defile you but what comes out hallelujah oh my god God, what comes out of you is what defiles you. So what am I saying tonight from the scriptures? Check on what comes out of you. Hallelujah. Check on what comes out of you. Because that one is, that, is as a... If you're not careful as a child of God, if you have not stored the word of God, if the diet that is inside you is not full of the word of God, then whatever comes out of you will be full of defilement and it is going to defile you. Hallelujah. So number one, make sure you have enough diet, all the components of the word of God, because this is where we get our guidelines as children of God. Number two, the Lord is saying, Matthew 15 and verse 10 to 11, check on what comes out of your life. Hallelujah. I'm talking about avoid defilement. Number three, the Lord is speaking to the church the Lord is speaking to us that we check on our associations check on your associations hallelujah every time you associate 
with the people who are not of your kingdom, people who are not speaking your language, people who are not, you know, people who don't live the, the, the you know, have the lifestyle you have as a child of God, people who are not of your kingdom. I don't say you we hate. We do not hate anybody. We, that, that, uh, no, the Bible says we love. You know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So you begin by loving yourself. So the other thing is, check on your association. Because what church? Now, listen to this. I love what Psalm, Psalm chapter 1 is saying. Let me read for you the word of God. Psalm chapter, chapter 1. I just want to quickly read for you the word of God. You know, we know the Psalm chapter 1. The Bible says, Blessed is a man who walks, in, who walks not. In the council of the ungodly, no starts in the path of sinners. Are you hearing this? So the number three, the Lord is speaking to us and he's saying, check on your associations. Because many of us began in the spirit, but as we draw to us, you know, going back home where we belong, going, you know, Jesus is coming for us. As we draw to that line, many of us are associating themselves because of business. I'm even seeing sisters get out of the house of God because they have waited on God for so long for marriage. And somebody says, oh my God, a man is a man. So, and the Bible is very clear. An unbeliever cannot get married to an you know, a believer, as somebody who is confessing to be born again. Don't tell me any other thing. God cannot do out to do his word. Hallelujah. A believer and an unbeliever, they cannot be tied together. Our, our daughters, please everybody who is going to watch this, do not scoop too low. Hallelujah. I'm seeing people because of business association, I, you know, somebody scooping too low to, to have the company of non-believers in their camp. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. Blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of, of the ungodly. Hallelujah. No stands in the path of sinners. Even studying is an issue. No sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. That is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Hallelujah. Oh my God. That is a man who is blessed. You know, people think blessing, it's having a nice, uh, a nice dress and all those things. Those are just outward, whatever, our physical blessings after our inner being is worked on. Hallelujah. Now listen to thee. He shall be like a tree that is planted by rivers of water. Hallelujah. And that brings forth its fruit in its, in, in its season. So what is failing us is because we are not walking in the counsel of God. Many of us have fallen short of the glory of God. And uh, you know, David, David is clarifying this, you know, walking, studying, and even sitting. Walking, studying, and sitting. You should make sure you have your own company. Hallelujah. Show me your association. I'll tell you who you are. Oh my God, show me your friends because from this we have what we call assimilation. Association will always bring assimilation. And let me surprise you today, my brethren. Whatever you associate yourself with for a very long time in your life, for many hours in your life, that is who you are. It will definitely assimilate you. It will eat you up. If you go with the people who are who are who are who are backbiters, at the end of the day, my God, even if you are an intercessor, at the end of the day, you'll be swallowed in and i've been telling even my very children be very careful of the people you work with hallelujah be very careful how are you going to be very careful the grace of god is there and the holy spirit of god is there to enable you to choose hallelujah who you are supposed to work with as a child of god the bible says bad company our young people bad company will spoil good morals hallelujah i've seen people who are studying who used to study well with god but within a very short time they no longer love god the way they used to love God, they no longer they no longer decide the things of God. Why? Check on your association because whatever you associate with for, for 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 a very long time in your life, it is going to assimilate you. Now that is defilement. God is saying, church, avoid defilement. Check on your association. Hallelujah. Check on your relationships. Check on your friendships. Check on your connections. Check on the people you are eating with. And when I say this, I'm even talking about your own people. Even if it is who. You know, one time somebody requested Jesus that he goes to bury the father. And instead of following Jesus, he's, he's like, let me go and uh, bury my father. And Jesus is telling that person, let the dead bury their dead. Hallelujah. Oh my, I love the ministry of Jesus. One time, somebody's, uh, the disciples and their people in the temple are telling Jesus, you know, your mother and your brothers are calling you. And Jesus is like, my mother, 
and my brothers or my brethren are these ones who are doing the will of my father. So it, it, it is not about who. You know, Jesus said he has come to bring division. Hallelujah. It is not about, and that's why I'm requesting the church, even if it is coming from your traditions, you know, even if it is coming from you, an elder in your village, an elder in your village should be respected, but he is not the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So as a child of God, what should move you? What should uh, what should uh, should make you take a step, you know, or, or make a move is what is read by the Spirit. Because the Bible says, as many as are read by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. So avoid defilement. Check by checking. Number three, by checking on your associations. And I'm saying, whatever you associate with, at the end of the day, it is going to assimilate you in Jesus' name. You can read uh, Psalm chapter 1 and finish all of it. You see, whatever this person who is breast does, it will prosper. Hallelujah. What Anything he does, it will prosper. Hallelujah. So if you are uh, having hit, uh, you know, hiccups here and there in whatever blessing God brought into your life, check on your associations. Check on your associations in the name of Jesus. Number four, the Lord is speaking to the church. For those who are joining us, I can see the servants of God, Eric from Mombasa. Pastor, God bless you. I honor the grace of God in your life. Number four, the Lord is speaking to the church. Uh, man of God, the Lord is speaking to the church today and telling us to avoid defilement. Jesus is coming for a church that does not have wrinkles or spots. So number four, I have already said that the points, but I'll repeat them for the sake of those who are joining up. Number four, the Lord is saying, watch all your spiritual gates. Watch over all your spiritual gates. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to mention some of them very quickly because we know them and I'm going to read some scriptures by the grace of God very fast. Now, check on your mind, you know, check on your mind. Check on your thoughts. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. Now, if you think things, things that are not okay, now you are defiling your system. You are defiling your system. Hallelujah. Now, meditate on the word. That's what we are seeing in Psalm chapter 1. Meditate on the word of God day and night. Meditate on the word of God because this is where your victory is as a child of God. This is where you are going to get the wisdom that does not come from our education or, 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 of, the, or the other system. This is where you are going to get the revelation this is where you're going to get the understanding of our kingdom and the knowledge of our kingdom and even the spirit of counsel is going to minister to your life as a child of God in the name of Jesus my brethren I'm saying number four avoid defilement watch over the, the your spiritual gates you know you are you you are gates you know you, you know I am calling them spiritual gates because we are sons of God hallelujah and our father is spirit so I, I'm not going to call them physical gates I'll call them spiritual gates because we are sons of God and our father is spirit hallelujah so check on your eyes, check on what you watch, what you see, what you see, what you watch. Hallelujah. My God, we are in the season of internet. Avoid defilement. Even on your phone when nobody is seeing, let your eyes be born again. They are part of your body, which is the temple of God. Hallelujah. Check on what you hear. Hallelujah. Check on your tongue. You know, even what you eat, your tongue, your mouth. Check on that. Those are gates. Hallelujah. Check on your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Check on your feet even where you go. Hallelujah. I'm calling them gates. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you the truth. What you see, what you see can defile me. I mean, so can defile you. What you hear can defile you. What you eat, what you say, you know, can defile you. What you, you even smell, you know, all those things. What you think can defile you. What you touch. Hallelujah. What you, 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 you put in your heart, what you store in your heart, another gate. Hallelujah. Even my God, I'm about to say something tonight by the grace of God. Even your private parts, hallelujah, hallelujah. Watch on those gates. Oh my God of all. That's why I say, if you're married, remain. Sex is supposed to be done, you know, to be enjoyed by the, by the people who are in that vicinity of marriage. If you're not married, if you're not married, hallelujah, church. No, you know these things. One time, one time, I encountered something that really broke my heart as a woman of God. Somebody is, is telling some people that, that and the, that person is a man of God in quotes, telling some people that it, when sex is done by two people who are born again, it is not sin because those people are holy. Those people are righteous. Now, I came to destroy that because I did that time and even today I'll say that. If you are not married, sex is only allowed by the word of God to those people who are married. Hallelujah. And 
I want to strip naked father that if you're not married, keep off sex because that is fornication. And that is fornication. If you are married, remain to your partner, to your wife or to your husband. If you go out of that marriage because of the rust of the flesh and the rust of the eye, that is called adultery. Hallelujah. And we must avoid this at whatever cost. This one must be said openly. Let us avoid. Don't tell us that is weakness. That is sin. If you allow the Spirit of God to take control of your body because it is a temple of God, there are things that you can never do. Oh, my the Joseph way. There are, there are some foods you can never eat. Hallelujah. Whether you're in your country or you're in your county or outside your country, there are things that you can never do. Hallelujah. So let us avoid defilement by the grace of God. And this, let me tell you the truth. You don't struggle. When you allow the Spirit of God to take over your life, you don't struggle with the sexual sins. You don't struggle with them. You don't struggle with them. Hallelujah. And something even surprising is that when others are being triggered by some kingdom of darkness and people covering up in the kingdom of darkness and in church. God will always spare you a life that nobody will come to mention such things even to your life. Hallelujah. So even in our internet, on our phones, let us avoid pornography. There are some things uh, I've been encountering and, and, you know, counseling some people. There are some things that are called Samatha. And these things should not be in the church. There are things that are called vibrators. There are things that are called family planning pills. These things are family planning methods and whatever. These things are not for the youth, for girls who are not married. Codoms, my Jehovah. Even if you do sex using a codom and you are not married, that is sin. Even if you do it with somebody, somebody who is not your wife or husband, before God, whether it is in a codom or not, that one is sin. Hallelujah. So, can we avoid defilement? Can you watch over your spiritual gates because you are a spiritual being? Can you watch over those gates? Be careful what you... you um what you watch, be careful of what you hear, be careful of what you touch, be careful even of what you say, what you, you what you, what you, what you eat, be careful even of your private, you know, private parts and your, you know, your body. I'm talking about the entire system of your body in the name of Jesus. Why? Because our God is a holy God. Hallelujah. And our bodies are his temple. Romans chapter 12, let us give our bodies uh, uh, as, as living sacrifices to God. Hallelujah. Let me read for you that scripture very fast. Let us give our bodies as living sacrifices to God. Let me read for you the scripture. It's good when I have given you the scripture so that you may not say, you know, this woman of God just speaks and speaks and speaks. So what the Bible says, I beseech you, Paul is beseeching, I beseech you, brethren, uh, by the masters of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices, as living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. Hallelujah. Which is your reasonable service. Hallelujah. So lifting up our hands, shouting, giving, and blah, blah, blah. That is not called a, a, a reasonable service. But giving our bodies or presenting our bodies as living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Holy and acceptable. Because God is holy. What is he going to accept? He's going to accept that particular body that is out of any defilement. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible says, We are the temple of God and His Spirit dwells in us. Hallelujah. We are the temple of God and the Spirit of God indwells us. Hallelujah. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19, the Bible says, Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Oh my God. Our body, your body, Hallelujah. Whether whether you're married or not, hallelujah. I know the two have become one. But no, even when your husband is not there with you, when your wife is not there, hallelujah. You belong. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in us, whom we have been given or we have gotten from our God. Hallelujah. And we are not our own. You are not your own. Are you hearing me, church? So avoid defiling your body. Avoid defiling in your body. Hallelujah. And I'm even talking about dressing styles, my sisters. Oh my God of all glory. You cannot dress like the, the, the women of the world and ex expect the Holy Spirit of God to be, you know, the Spirit of God is already in you. But when you grieve him, that's what the Bible says in the book of the Thessalonians. You know, we avoid grieving the Holy Spirit. Now, the minute you grieve him, even by the way you dress, by the way you do your things, hallelujah. Oh my God of all glory. Even before you make up, oh my, before we do all those things, make 
sure you are preaching the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Because that body you want to make up and to draw and to do a blah, 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 is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So let us avoid that. I want to quickly read the word of God in the book of Ephesians chapter, chapter 2 and verse 21. Ephesians chapter 2, I'm there, and verse 21, the Bible says, I'll read verse 19 to 22. The Bible says, Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. So that is the body of Jesus Christ. We, are, we belong, to one, we belong to, one, to one household. Hallelujah, household of God. So we are not foreigners. We are not foreigners. The Bible says, Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, uh, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building, hallelujah, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. That means, hallelujah, in the house of God, in that place we gather to worship, we should know that we, we, are, we, are, we are a building, oh my God, that is supposed to grow, hallelujah, as a holy temple in the Lord. That means in our midst, anybody connected to this body of Jesus Christ, on, your, on their own, even before we gather, we should avoid any man of defense. Defilement. The word of God tonight is avoid defilement. Hallelujah. Because if you are nigh and you are defiled, when you come to us, my Jehovah, as a part of the body, you are defiling us. Hallelujah. How many people know when your eye is not okay, the entire body is uncomfortable? Oh my God of all grace. Hallelujah. If your heart is not okay, the entire system, the entire body from your the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, you'll be feeling it. You'll get it. Hallelujah. So the same case applies to you because we are one body. We are one thing. We are one building. Hallelujah. And we are, we are meant to grow into a holy temple in the Lord. Avoid defilement on your own in the name of Jesus. In whom you are, uh, you also are be built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Hallelujah. We are being built together. So when we gather as a church of Jesus Christ, as a building of God, hallelujah, we are supposed to have, you know, God is supposed to dwell there, you know, together for a dwelling place. God is supposed to dwell in our midst. Hallelujah. And the power of God is going to be manifested in the name of Jesus Christ. Number five, the last one I'm going to speak about for this night, or whatever time it is in your country, the Lord is speaking to the church, avoid defilement. So number five, the Lord is speaking about be careful. Number five, the last one for this hour, the Lord is saying, be careful about the altar you furnish in your life or in your work of faith. Be very careful. Now, Every time you deal with an altar, and I want to give a scenario of Mount Carmel, we have two kingdoms or two gods there. Hallelujah. Elijah and the prophets of Ba. Amen. We have two scenarios, you know, a, a scenario where two gods are, 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 are under one roof or they are, they are, you know, two altars are about now to, 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 to reflect or to, to show the world who is who. And we are seeing the same scenario in the, in the life of, of Gideon. Hallelujah. When God raised Gideon and given Gideon, gave Gideon an assignment, we are seeing Gideon do an operation of messing up with the God of his fathers. Hallelujah. He, he brought down they are shared at the, the, those, 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 those gods, you know, the idol worship in his father's house. Hallelujah. Now, the father comes up in the morning and he says, if this goddess is God, he is able, you know, that thing is able to, to fight for itself. And if Jehovah be God, he also is able to do that. So we are seeing a scenario at Mount Carmel. Now, it is about altar to altar, altar to altar. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me, church. Be very careful. Be very careful. And, uh, you know, there is a lot of ignorance. There is a, thank you, woman of God, Helen Karemi. There is a lot of ignorance in the church of Jesus Christ where we want to do things. You know, we want to furnish the altar of our God. Have bits. You want to do things. Have bits. We don't want to do the, 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 the whole guideline of the word of God. And we are expecting that God is going to, to answer us. God is going. Now, the, uh, the, the altar you furnish. Using the guidelines or the prospects of that particular altar, that altar is speaking for you. It is speaking for your life. It is speaking for your destiny. Hallelujah. Now, this is what... This is what receives your sacrifices. This is what receives your offerings. Hallelujah. So I'm talking to the church. Avoid defilement. Be sure. 
Be sure that whatever altar where you lay your sacrifices, where now the sacrifices, it is including your time, your resources, you, your thought and everything. Hallelujah. As a child of God. Now, the altar that you deal with matters. Hallelujah. So avoid defilement because this is where, this is the, the, the praise that receives uh, your sacrifices and receives your, your offerings and it is able to answer for your life. It is able to to answer for you. Hallelujah. Now, there is a lot of habits, you know, habits for, in the lives of the children of God where we want not to obey the word of God in totality. I'm hearing a scripture in the, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me get the scripture. I'm hearing a scripture right now in the Spirit of God. Let me get it for you. Let me get the scripture for you in the book of Jeremiah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm hearing that scripture in the Spirit. I'm hearing that scripture in the Spirit. Uh, uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, the Bible says in, uh, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, I want to read uh, from verse 17. Therefore, prepare yourselves and arise and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be dismayed before their faces. Uh, that is where I'm headed, to, but I want to get the whole thing. Uh, lest I display you before them. For behold, I have made you this day a fortified city and an, an iron pillar. I'm reading from the, the New King James. And at Bruce War, against the Horad, against the kings of Judah, against its princes, against its uh, priests, and against the, uh, the, 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 the people of, of the Lord. They will fight against you. Hallelujah. You see, this is, this, is, this is speaking from where we are coming from. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. Hallelujah. So from, and that's what we have been seeing in the life of Joseph. From the altar you furnish, from the altar you deal with, that altar is supposed to answer you. That, that altar is supposed to deliver your life. That altar is supposed to, do, uh, to, do, to, 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 to answer your life and to handle the issues of your life in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 1, I want also to read the word of God in the book of Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. I'm getting these scriptures from the Holy Spirit where I'm seated right now. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 1, now, the Bible says in verse 19, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the Lord. If that now, that is of our kingdom. If you are willing, that's what the Bible says. God desires mercy than judgment. And he says, obedience is better than a sacrifice. Hallelujah. You know, one time Jesus is speaking and saying, if you know you have a, you have a disagreement with anybody, before you lay your, 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 your offering on the altar, and you remember you have an issue with a brother, hallelujah, Go, leave the, the, the offering there. Go sort it out. Then you come and give. Hallelujah. Now, these are matters of our kingdom and I want to you know the other, yesterday I said something as I was ministering I said something for those people who have uh, who have watched that video I said something now we cannot furnish the altar of our God half beats and expect to get the whole bread hallelujah we cannot now the Lord is saying avoid defilement if you're furnishing the altar of your God do it wholeheartedly do it in obedience in totality because we are in a season of being totally refined. Hallelujah. Now, God will not answer have, and you know, God is not a haphazard God. He's not. He's a, he's, a, he's a total being and the Bible says his spirit and those who worship him in this particular hour must do it in truth and in spirit. Truth is the word of God. So if you are appearing before God with your anything, with your time and your everything, you must have the truth. That is the word of God. Hallelujah. So if you are willing to follow the, 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 the ways of the Lord, to do things the way they are supposed to be done as, as a child of God, then you are going to eat the good of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, verse 20, but if you refuse, that is Isaiah chapter 1, but if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. Hallelujah. So, my brethren, tonight, by the grace of God, the Lord is saying, now, an altar, an altar is a place of exchange, is a place of exchange. Hallelujah. Oh my God. I don't have time that please servants of God, the apostles, I can see you there. Please clarify this word to the church. Now it's a place of exchange. I'm just reading a prophetic word. Now it's a place of communication. Hallelujah. Where your life deals, uh, you know, communicate with the whatever you furnish there, the altar you are, you are dealing with. It's a place of influence. Hallelujah. Now the altar you furnish will actively respond to your activities will actively respond. It is an active thing. And I've been saying to the church that the God 
we, we are following, the God of our, uh, the Father of our, our Savior, Jesus Christ, He's very active. He's present. Hallelujah. He's a reality. He's not a cadabra. He's not a magician. Hallelujah. That's why in Deuteronomy chapter 28, He's telling the children of Israel, if you do this, this will follow. If you don't do this, that will follow. Hallelujah. God is a very generous God. So, I, I know we are in a season of grace where everybody say, oh my God, it cannot be this. We are in a season of grace. No, there is no judgment. God is merciful. God is what? The Bible says he's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And his word is forever settled in heaven. By the way, for information, the Bible says that he has exalted his word above his name. Hallelujah. So the altar you furnish with your time, with your everything, is supposed to actively answer your life. It's supposed to be very active. Now, if I look at your life, or if you look at my life, look at the altar I'm dealing with as a person. Hallelujah. And because... I'm not just ministering to the people who are born again on this platform. Kaidre, let us be restored by God created us with an intention and with a desire because we have his own image. The Bible says, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13, that we may fear him and obey his commands. So let, that is the altar where we are coming from. That is the stone where we have been welled from. Let us go back there. Let us fear God and obey his commandments with your all. Hallelujah. So every altar has rules and regulations. That's why even the people who go to witches, they are told to do this. If you don't do it the way the, 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 the witch doctor said, things turn against you. So why do you want things of God to, to be otherwise? Hallelujah. We want just to be running to God when we have needs. We want to just be looking for prophets when we have needs. We just want to give seeds or to give when we, when we have needs or when we have issues. You know, you can never bribe God. So let us do what we are supposed to do in our kingdom according to the precepts that are set in the word of God continually. Hallelujah. Continually it should be done continually. So the author any author that you deal with has rules and regulations and they must be adhered to fully or wholly so as there to be results. Hallelujah. So the author you furnish, avoid defilement. If you are dealing with an author that is not the author of God, that is not according to the word of God. That's why I'm saying, number one, we said, have the word of God at your fingertips. If you are somewhere, even where you fellowship, and you realize now, God, this one, this one is not scriptural. Whatever things are being done there, because we are in other times, there is a lot of activity of men a lot, and, a lot, and a lot of religion. Please learn for your life. Connect yourself to an altar that is, uh, that is doing things the way they are supposed to be done, according to the, uh, to the set guidance of the word of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, God is holy. He does not share altars. He does not. That's why I've even been speaking about my country. When they call for prayers, please let us know whether it is uh, the Muhammad who is answering, whether it is Jesus Christ, or whether it is uh, the Hindu gods, hallelujah. If it is one God, let them be called that particular God to answer. Even nations of the world, let it be known who is answering where. But when there is this confusion, we cannot know who did not answer and who, who answered. But I want to clarify to all of us, there is only one God who hears. Hallelujah. You can ask Gideon. Amen. It's only one God. It's only one God who has ears. So let us know that God is holy. For us who are following him, let us know God is holy and he is very generous. Hallelujah. He's all must be clean. Avoid defilement. Your body is already a temple of God and Paul is saying that we give our bodies as living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So avoid defilement. If that altar is defiling you, maybe by what you are seeing, activities that are not of God, by what you are healing, things that are not scriptural, run for your life. Hallelujah. It does not matter who is in charge of that altar. If, if, if that person in charge of that altar is not coming from God, if Jesus came today, you are going to be left. Hallelujah. So this, that's what we are seeing at Mount Carmel. There is a cleaning up. Hallelujah. Because God does not share his glory. He does not share altars. Hallelujah. Elijah did an operation to make sure the altar that was screamed hallelujah and god answered hallelujah so uh, god is holy make sure that altar you are tending to where you give your offerings your money where you spend your time hallelujah make sure that altar is worthy to speak for your life in the name of jesus amen i, I, I i'm hearing something in the spirit from as i finish, I'm, I'm through i'm hearing something in the spirit where i'm seated that many people are struggling in the church of jesus christ because they have not been able to discern uh, which is which no there is a lot of divination in the church of jesus christ right now a lot of divination there is a lot of lies there is a lot of fake 
There is a lot of fake. And that's why the Bible says, as many as are read by the Spirit of God, thank you, man of God, Gladys, as many as are read by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So even where you take your money, even if it is two shillings, even if it is ten shillings, you know, I, I, I have realized, I have realized something. I don't know, man of God, you can confirm this, that people don't want to connect themselves to the true servant of God. But when they are told by the fake, do this, they learn how to skelter. And many people even, uh, they hide from where they fellowship, they hide they go somewhere and do whatever they are doing and it is fake. Then they come and pretend as if they have done nothing. Now, those altars you have been furnishing in a secret. Now, look at your life. That is the way your life is. That is the way your life is. So, I did not come to condemn. I did not come to judge. I came to say, let us be reconciled back. Let us maintain at the altar of God. And let us do whatever is written in the word of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Quickly, number one, we are recapping. Number one, my time is up. Now, God is speaking to the church this particular moment. And he's saying, church, avoid defilement. Why? Because we are in, a, in the end time. We are in that end lap. You know, the finishing, the finishing lap. Now, the Bible, the Lord is saying, we are in a season of being, uh, of a joint final sanctification. We are in a season of a joint total purification, a season of a joint proper refinement, a season of a joint uh, end time alignment, where you are not going to do things out of skelter. You are going to do what you're supposed to do as a child of God this particular moment. There'll be no confusion for you. The other thing is that uh, we are going to see uh, uh, reaching out of souls and we are going to see finishing revival. Hallelujah. And I've said this is where the Spirit of God is going to convince you. If this is sin without even a preacher near your life or near your, your camp, the Spirit of God is going to convince you. This in our kingdom, these are not done this way. These are not said this way. Hallelujah. Because we are in a season of that finishing revival in the name of Jesus. So the Lord is saying to the church, avoid the last of the flesh, the last of the eye, and the pride of life. Those three spirits, we know them. Now, the Lord is saying, have enough diet. Take enough diet. Diet, the balanced diet of the eat the word of God. Hallelujah. Have it. Have the word of God in your life. Amen. I, and I said John 15 and verse 3. Very fast. Hallelujah. For the people who are joining up with us. Thank you, man of God, Beatrice. Uh, Beatrice. Now the Lord is saying, number two, check on what comes out of you. Because Jesus said, whatever enters uh, a man does not defile, but whatever comes out defiles you. So avoid defilement from whatever is coming out of you. I, I don't have time to say much. I've already preached. Number three, the Lord is saying, check on your associations. Check the people you associate with. And I've told you to go and read the word of God in Psalm chapter 1. That is enough. Psalm chapter 1. Hallelujah. It is going to finish everything for you. Because what you associate with, it is going to assimilate you as a child of God. Hallelujah. Now, the other thing is, watch on the spiritual gates. I, I said, I'm calling because you're a spiritual being. Watch on the spiritual gates. That means your mind, your, your thoughts, your you know, your eyes, your ears, your sexual organs, blah, blah. You know, your hands, your feet. Watch on those things. Avoid defilement. Hallelujah. The last thing I've said is that make sure that you are furnishing the altar that is of your true God. Watch out the altar you are furnishing with your all in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me make a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus. I have released the word of God as you put it in my spirit to the church in the world. And God, you are speaking to us because God, you are preparing the bride of Jesus Christ for his coming. Jehovah God, I pray from where I'm seated that if there be anybody in our midst who has been trapped by the devil here and there, my God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, I pray that the, 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 the ministry of reconciliation, the spirit of reconciliation will reach out to them from this hour as they watch this word and hear this word, they are going to be reconciled back. Father, let there be reconciliation. Let people be reconciled back to you in the name of Jesus. My God, Jesus is coming for a church that does not have wrinkles or spots. He's coming for a church that he labored for on the cross at Calvary. And this particular moment, Father, I pray that even one of us has fallen short of your glory. From this hour, your spirit is going to quicken them and go to restore them where they are supposed to be in the name of Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit of God because you are going to convince many that God where they have been defiled, maybe because of their association, business association, my God, my ritual association, my God, because of traditions of men, you are going to deliver them because Father, 
Jesus said, whoever you have given unto him, none of them will get lost unless the son of perdition. God, deliver your children so that the name of the Lord may be glorified. Father, we thank you and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. May the Lord bless you. We shall keep tuned as the Lord is releasing the lemma word in our spirit. We shall keep on speaking to you because God has given us that assignment. Share, share the word of God. Let the church be edified by the grace of God. God bless you.